In a world where gamers have infinite choices at their fingertips, one man seeks to uncover the crap and find the ultimate gems, to denounce deception and explore the creative new world ahead. His name is Josh, and Josh Blaze. Hey everybody, today we are back. We're going to be doing a game from Limited Run. It's been a re-release of an old popular title that is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Yes, the physical copy from Limited Run. And uh, it's based on the cult film now. It didn't do too well in the box office at the time of its release. Didn't really make a big splash. Now is a huge fan base, but when the indie game was developed and released um, on the digital market um for to be played you know uh digitally it was removed because of licensing issues and it that pissed a lot of people off it was a beloved game so today we're going to be playing it and taking a look at it and uh, i remember having a lot of fun oh that's a cute little nod uh winners don't eat me and of course you gotta love the graphical style i mean jesus come on so that's that's what we're doing, Scott Pilgrim. This is the re-release called the Complete Edition. So I believe it's got like everything you could possibly need. We'll do. Um, I guess we'll do story mode. Start fresh. I'm not. I. I it sucks because I always started on my regular. Yeah, my regular. Um, what do we do, Ramona? And we'll do pink hair. Um. I do it on my Switch Lite, so usually my save games are on that SD card. But uh, in the case of console recording for the capture card, uh, Snowy Toronto, don't be late for the big show. And I'm pretty sure because I've read the Brian O'Malley uh, graphic mangas, I think it's like a six series, six book, seven book series, maybe eight, but it's somewhere between six and eight. I've read them all, um, and... I feel like the sh the cartoon. I love how you collect the coins. I feel like the cartoon better. Uh, the cartoon video game better translates the style that Brian O'Malley kind of did in the comics. Um, not to say Edgar Wright's vision of adapting that wasn't done masterfully, because it was. It, to me, it's one of the most underrated films of the last decade, no less of like his career for sure. Edgar Wright. Everyone kind of knows him for doing the uh, Coronado trilogy with Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and World's End. And that being said, uh, I kind of feel like Scott Pilgrim and even Baby Driver to an extent aren't often spoken about when you think of Edgar Wright. And I still would love to have known what Edgar Wright would have done with uh, Ant-Man when he was the original director hired by Kevin Feige to do the film before Peyton Reed took over probably would have been a good director for it you know Edgar Wright's super visual um he plays around with a lot of fast cuts and uh re excellent editing in his films um and choreography staging blocking like I love Edgar Wright um so what he would have done with Ant-Man would have been interesting you can literally like pick up anything I'll throw that at you baseball just pound him away um yeah, so, and I, and I thought that he did a faithful job of taking that much material and condensing into about a two-hour film. Um, there's some stuff he took out from the mangas, but it wasn't necessary, um, I think, to the overall plot progression of the story that it's trying to tell. Um, it, it could be cut out and still you get the idea of what you're getting, you know? Or you get the idea of what the plot of, you know, the through line is of the theme. Um, with or without those scenes being told so excellent film if you haven't seen Scott Pilgrim I believe it's on Netflix catch it before Netflix it does something stupid you wake up one day and it's just disappeared all right so you get real coins which I like it's like a parody Oop, there I go it's like a parody of Mario kind of how you get coins but in this it's actual currency just like they did in the film when Scott would kill one of the evil ex-boyfriends I believe the complete edition has Knives, Chow, uh, and Young Neil. I could be wrong though. I don't think they were, you know, someone can correct me if they want. I don't believe they were in the original uh, versions of the indie titles. Or if they were, they were just downloadable content prior to it being taken down. Well, we're on that subject actually, games being taken down, right? 
Like, my understanding is that there's no further work being done on those Friday the 13th online games. And personally, like, my guilty pleasure, I enjoy the hell out of them. I have a good time. Ooh. Um, I always have a good time playing those. Um, and I was happy with the complete edition that the Switch released because it had all of the downloadable content that had been created up to that point, plus a couple of new things that were for just that release. But, uh, you know, the guy who, who claims to have created the franchise for the Friday the 13th, uh, he's been legally going at it against Sean Cunningham, the director of the movie, uh, for a long time about who's actually the owner of the franchise. So therefore, no further progression has been made on the game. So I like this, like, standstill where no updates are done, but, you know, oof. The remaining fans still jump on and play, but I have a good time. And for one of the, you know, Switch isn't known for its online titles being particularly well done or without their lag. But um, I feel like that actually not only has a community, but the game runs smooth for, I mean, if you know how Jason, or Friday the 13th plays the video game, you should know. I mean, it's it's a big, it's, a, it's not a small indie title. I mean, it's an indie developed game, but... It's, it's more open world and it's not like a puzzle game that's in 2D or anything like that that you'd buy on the eShop for five bucks. Um, it's a lot. Uh, Switch handles it really well. So it's just disappointing to see that those legal rights, just like with Scott Pilgrim being taken out of the eShop, e and it sucks because all the people that bought it didn't get to keep the game either. It was inaccessible once they uh, updated their system, I believe. Or correct me if I'm wrong, it was simply just when, say you got your PS4, um, and you transfer your cloud data to, from the PlayStation 3, it wouldn't transfer. It's almost like an unrecognizable purchase on your system, and it doesn't go over. So basically, they took, they gave something really good. This game's awesome, by the way. Um, and took it away from you. And that's why the demand, I think, was so high. And Limited Run, they're always the first up to bat to say, like, let's, let's be the ones that put this out. We know how good this game is. I love how it's the same park, you know, Ramona and Scott. Uh, had like, kind of their first date, I guess you will. This guy was worried about how his hair looked, put his hat on, and used the excuse to go for a walk. I'm about to die. And ironically, like most people that I talk to who think of Scott Pilgrim, they tend to like it because of all the retro, um, what's the word, references. You know, you have the Ze Legend of Zelda, um, uh, you know, sound bites being used for certain scene transitions, rather, and then um, just obviously tons of video game references. It's so inspired by that 16-bit era, but um, it sucks because the movie does have so much good comedy in there, and excellent writing, and shooting, and choreography. Like just how the movie starts, where you have Scott and his band, Sex Bob Bomb practicing in the living room and the way that they present the credits to you and like how the living room's got this kind of strong um uh three-dimensional like elongated view um while the credits are coming at you and scott's playing just i don't know i, I love i think it's an artistic film i can look beyond the fact that it's not only just cool and retro i like a lot of things about it it's just really well done let me get this gold coin Ooh, 13th i wonder what i'll be able to buy i forget I owned this game for a brief time. Um, I was never, I had it for my PlayStation 3. Um, I was kind of a Nintendo fanboy at that time. Um, I, I was playing when I did have a chance because I worked a lot. Um, finally get a chance to play video games. I usually played Punch-Out on the Wii, Mario Galaxy. I was very much on the first person titles. Uh, Mario, uh, Nintendo had it on the GameCube going into the Wii era. Uh, I played Skyward Sword when I was uh, during this time period. I had a PlayStation 3 towards the end, and I had Scott Pilgrim, um, but I didn't put a lot of time and hours into it. There was, I, I, I wasn't always in a place where I could play video games as often as I can, you know? So I barely get the chance as much as I'd like to now with working as often as I do. So that's why it was nice. I, I had to pick up the limited run physical release. I knew... Uh, I liked it a lot the first time, and there, there was like a fever pitch for the amount of fans who were interested in seeing it, you know, make a comeback. Uh, to have another way to play it again, and if, having it physical, you know, if the licensing issue comes up again, uh, with Universal, Brian O'Malley, whoever the issues were with, the developers, I have no idea exactly, but it was licensing. Um, if it happens again, I have a physical copy, they ain't gonna take that from me. So, thank you Limited Run for doing that. I have another uh, limited 
run game on the way as well as a strictly limited um, Cotton reboot for the switch will be coming soon. And of course, I gotta wait for all the pre-orders to fulfill before they begin shipping them out And then I also have a Neo Geo pocket color and uh, collection that'll be a limited run co-release with SNK uh, I bought it through Limited Run's website, which will include the 10 best, like, or, you know, most well-known titles in the Neo Geo Pocket presented in, like, HD, um, you know, for a Switch, and it's just, it looked, it looked really nice, it's a very unique collection, probably gained some value over years, and on top of that, um, I don't really emulate, um, so playing a lot of these older games, this is usually how I do it. I buy a lot of those collections, by the way, like, I have the SNK collection for Switch, I love... Uh, discovering games and I don't really emulate a lot. I'm not a big PC gamer um, We did a couple episodes like heretic. I think on PC We were gonna do Oregon Trail believe it or not as a joke, but we never ended up doing it We did something else that day, but I didn't you know, I like PC. I grew up on it I played Myst, uh, Virtual Cop and uh, Starcraft, Mine uh, Minecraft, uh, Warcraft 3 and but now I grab as as I got older I gravitated using my time that I had to making it so I don't have to boot computers up anymore or anything like that. I kinda got over that. I like to just pop a console on. And to be honest, that's why I like the Switch Lite, you know, because when I get off work, sometimes I don't even wanna I wanna put something else on TV. Just veg out on my couch and play a game and like not be too beholden to it or pay too much attention I can kind of divide it especially with games like Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley you know oh shit uh, I'm, I don't want to get me don't give me game right, I'm good I want to at least get out of this area I'll probably do more Ooh, got another I got another oh my god but they put you up against three and they take good damage or they do good damage it's insane Look at that, 34. Oh my god, he threw a bottle while I was on the ground. I took five damage over that. Come on, die, you son of a... Stop throwing stuff at me. Thank you. Get that, get that money. I finally broke that twin twin. Boop. What happens when I go in here? Alright, let's check it out. Alright, cool. Subspace highway, that's awesome because you remember how in Scott's mind she travels through a subspace highway in his consciousness on rollerblades in the desert. Kind of a different take on it. I think it's kind of parodying the uh, cat with the rainbow. Throwing up cat, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, the meme off the top of my head. Oh, cool, maybe there's a shortcut, who knows? Oh my god. Oh my god. That's how I, 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 I need to get, open this. What's this? I oh, didn't mean to do that. Jesus, the, like the AI is actually like pretty good for a brawler. You know how like most brawlers they kind of mindlessly let you just wail on them? No, these guys, like, they defend themselves, no less have projectiles, it's kind of crazy. Come on, what, what's the deal? There's got to be a way to, like, crack this open. Snowball fight, no. Oh my god. Get out of here, why am I having a snowball fight? I want out of here. Do I have to really walk up to these piles and throw snowballs? Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Get out of here. God, dude. 
These projectile motherfuckers just abusing that system. Oh my god. Sorry. Oh my god, it just fucking hits me in the head. Oh my god, if this guy kills me. Piece of shit. Life, guys. Oh shit, okay. No account. Scott Slave fees $504.25. Uh, Len, you can pay it? Okay, so B. Why would I pay off Scott's late fees? I have to check this one out. Yeah, I like how you can pick up just about anything. Just keep chugging it. I think you can do the same though. Okay, keep that in mind. Let's get that dollar. Look at this guy. Oh shit. This guy's looking serious. Oh my god, he did serious damage. That's how you do it though. What's in here? Break that shit open. Some goodies. Nothing? Dick. Cones are like your best friend in this game, I swear to god. Soundtrack so good. Oh my god, I ran right into that. Yeah, boy.
I'm never gonna survive this guy. These guys are a bitch. And if you start to use the same move, they like figure that shit out. It's insane. right into that. Thank you for the game. Oh, ooh. Oh, one last chance. Damn. You rushing monster, you. Out of here. How much more? Ah, 36 bucks. Can't buy shit yet. I see, I see. That's the reason why you want that cash. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah, that's my game over. Level three now. Here. All right, so you get the idea. The whole point is you have to keep leveling up until you get to the strategy or the right power set where you can get through the level without being man taken. I, I got pretty far on that one. In fact, I was actually near the end, so one more run through, I probably would have been at the right level. And the idea is you get to about to level four. Then when you're at level four, you'll have enough of the special moves to kind of power through the guys quicker, take lots of damage, and so forth and so forth. Anyways, I'm glad that you guys stuck around and watched that. Um, our new episodes will be coming soon. I have some other really cool surprises in the pipeline. I don't want to talk too much about it. Um, thank you for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it. And you guys have a good night.